This is a test of making a bike frame really quick. Press here to start it. We want to equalize this right here. Right click and turn on the stepping. I'll go over everything just a little bit here. But I'm just going to do it real quick, quick so you can kind of see how this is going to work. And I'll explain later exactly what I'm doing here. So bear with me. Extreme mode and we're going to use the probably look like the floor grooves. And turn off spacing. Mode. Up here where the handlebars go to the back of the seat was actually a little shortened here and all I did was hide part of this and moved it and made it a little bit longer. There will be a link below the video and you can uh, download download this script and try it. Um, I made the bike in approximately 2 minutes and 30 seconds. There's other techniques. I'm pretty sure I could got this cut down between 2 minutes and 2 minutes and 15 seconds. I had a couple mistakes but hey... Uh, that was pretty quick so I'm gonna actually uh, show you how I kinda did the bike then I need to go over a few extra things um, basically if you just follow along I mean it's not necessary to have a polymer 3D star out here but I do and then I'm gonna press this button here and what this is gonna do is gonna load a cube in it's also gonna load all my brushes up here and every time I click something you'll see these brushes change over here with the name um, the next step was I want to go to equal spacing right here so for extruding with equal spacing so I click this when I do this you'll see the move change to extrude and this is for the spacing um, this brush loaded up but by default it does not save the step by brush here so I have to manually turn this on every time I do this so with this is set it increased my draw size to 200 and this should give you equal spacing if not let me know and I'll see if I can fix it for you all right then I clicked here and if you want to check equal spacing, um, if you go to the move mode here, the transpose tool, and if you drag across here and come up to the left hand corner, you can see it says 0 0.2588, and this is my first cube, and it says the same thing, so let's go to the last cube that was extruded, and we're going to get the same measurements, this is let me know all the way around, this is a perfectly square cube. So, uh, what I did was just come up here instead of dragging I just clicked and it made it extended it longer then I dragged down here okay like I said I'm not going to go everything over everything I did turn on the X first symmetry here and when I pulled out and then like this so I don't have to pull down here I just click and it pops right there and I just pull back here and drag like that all right uh, the next step is uh, I'm going to press done okay and what this will do is actually set me over here in the bridge mode. 
and we are automatically in the bridge mode so I'll just click the face here and face here face here and face here all right really don't care to have all this group right now so I'll just uh, what I did was group visibility and uh, next step is I went ahead and did the uh, inset here I'm not sure what order I did all this so I'll just kind of give you a demonstration and when I drag here it does it on the other side so I'll be able to click and click then when I want to key mash here I click here and just kind of pop the hole through it and pop the hole through it this way and went to this one here I had to go back and right click and turn the stepping off and basically I I think I went to polygroup uh, let's see I think that was polygroup and I just drug out like this when I got like this far out I let go and just clicked on the top and the hotkey for subdivision and we all know that's over here it's the hotkey I'm using to turn that on and off Alright, I uh, did use, uh, if you ever mess up something, you can use the key mesh here, and if you wanted to kind of move some these edges out, you can do whatever you want. And you don't actually have to, you can click the brush up here to go to bridge mode, but I, for a quick one, I just press that button and I'm automatically in the bridge mode. Alright, I did not do that in the video, but I'm doing it right here. So let's go into the next step. Let's say uh, that uh, you already did a project, you want to start another one. Um, this is the start here. Uh, when you press here, you will lose all your settings that you made. Um, there's other ways around this, but uh, actually the best way to do it, there's like only one settings you have to change, so it's not big of a deal here. So you open this up. What we want to do is reset all the brushes because if we don't, I think I'll end up adding a bunch of more of these brushes and we don't want to bulk up here. So we'll reset all brushes and press start. Automatically put me in move mode. This is what I want. I'm going to go into some of these other settings here. Okay, this is the active cube. Okay, and you can move it back and forth. And I want you to keep an eye on the sub tool. What this is going to do is duplicate the active tool. So if I press here, it duplicated it, and now we can drag it across here. We can duplicate it and drag it up here. Okay, now this is the active tool, so every time I press that, that's going to duplicate where I'm at. If I do not want that one duplicated, and let's say this one here at the bottom, hold the Alt key and click it, and now this one is the active one so we can duplicate that one and drag up like this all right now when we are done we want to press the done button and this is going to merge them all together and it's going to set us into bridge mode all right now we can select our faces and bridge these together however we want As you can see, we got one tool here that are all together. Oh, we could still duplicate all this if we press duplicate. And we could just move the whole thing over here and press done. And we can bridge these here together. All right. Uh, this equal spacing is not working for you. I can kind of show you how you can get it to work um, It's working for me. So what you want to do is you want to you know go ahead and make sure your perspectives off and frame this up and You can see my cursor is really big. Okay, the center one is fitting perfectly. Okay that Indicates this is gonna work 
Another way you can do it is, we'll set this to 100. And then it's got to fit perfectly inside the cube, and nothing hanging outside the cube, and it's got to hang tight to the borders. All right, once you've got that there, you'll double up your draw size. So if it's 100, I'll make it 200. Then we'll need to test this. All right, to test this, we'll click here and make sure if we reload any of the brushes, we'll need to go and right click the face and turn on step by brush here. And we'll check it and just do a couple of examples here. Then we'll use the move mode and drag around it and check the measurements, okay? You, you can go around the bottom of this cube and check it all the way around if you want to. And when you get done, since that's the original one, make sure that you're getting equal spacing all the way around it. Everything, all the equal measurements should be square. For some reason, it is not square, and let's say you are at Yours won't do uh, perfect squares, and the draw size needs to be 250. Well, there's going to be a text document that you'll be able to open up and edit. All you got to do is look for this word right here, okay? It's for extruding with equal spacing, and believe, and below that it will say like, I set draw size to 200. All you need to do is check change the 200 out to whatever you think is going to work for you. All you do is change out the number and make sure you don't change it with anything but numbers in there or nothing will work correctly if you want to add a cube to here and you don't want to start all over by pressing the start button we got this one it's called the uh, cube loader well the loads cube so basically if you have something in the way here you might not be able to see it so if i press here you can see right there it is. If I turn on solo, you can see where it just added another cube. So there it is if you decide that you want to add an extra cube without starting over. Because if you do start over with this right here, it's going to take everything out and just put the cube in there. So we really don't want that. This will allow you to add a cube and you can drag it up. And since I already got one active, I don't have to add another cube there if I don't want to. Or I can just press duplicate and just add to that one and then I'll have two of them like that. Press done, we're done, and it merges them all together. Alright, the equal spacing in these cubes right here. Um, what's good about this is when you use an inset here and you punch a hole through here, it'll be circular or have a circle shape to it when you subdivide it and um, that's kind of one benefit there's all kinds of stuff that uh, I'm not going to go over but uh, I mean if you want equal spacing all the way up you can if you don't you can actually uh, just use the key mesh here and just drag up and say from here I want equal spacing and with this equal spacing here all right then I want to let's say I don't want no equal spacing over here so I'll just use it mesh and we can drag over here and go equal spacing and drag it out here and we can maybe have equal spacing out here that way I don't have all the edges right here for right now if I don't want them then, then we can kind of bridge this together like this and if I use the inset here see the circular shape right there you can do all kinds of things besides just make a bike frame so there's car frames or anything that has tubulars to it or tubes or kind of tubular shape fingers whatever it will make it for you um, 
I'll have a link below the video and you can download this and try it um, it's going to have a text file in there it's going to have some brushes in there and they all need to be in the same directory for this to work okay thank you